Okay, Thursday night we're learning the dinam of davening with a minion. And a person should always make a very big effort to daven with a minion. And we discussed then the Pasuk King Kilgaber Liyimos. Hashem never despises uh, when a, major, a community davens. And we explained the reason for that is because like when you buy an apple, a single apple, so you look it over very well to see if it's good or not. You buy it by the case, you just look at the general case, it's good, you take the whole case. Same thing when a person davens as an individual, Hashem looks you over to see what's the story. Yeah, I deserve, not deserve. You down with a minion, everybody's davening together, so Hashem says, I'll answer it. So now there's a very interesting shayla. What happens, let's say you come to a minion that davens might have early, before this man. You know, sometimes you daven a little early. Is it better to daven ma'ariv with the minion, or should you better wait to daven ma'ariv yourself, but in the proper time of davening ma'ariv? It's a very interesting discussion in Allah. So the native Yuda holds, it's better to daven with the minion. Even though, you know, you're not davening in the proper man, but davening with the minion is better, and then later you say over the Shema again. You think it's some ascetic holds though, and that's what we follow, that it's better to daven be yechidus in the proper time than daven with the minion when it's early. But obviously if you need it for the minion, then obviously you have to daven with the minion. Otherwise it's not a, it's not a very good thing. Okay, next is like this. Why? What huh? does he say why? The child is which one of the two is better, davening no, bismat. Instead of saying why, you uh, I don't remember. Honest, I don't remember. But no, the question is, is it better to have him or better to have him with a minion? I mean... The same applies for nets, before nets, after nets? Yeah, the same thing would apply with nets, yeah. Well, technically, you could have him for Namuda Shachar. You could, halachically, you're allowed to have the Amida. Thousand film, maybe not. But the Amida, for sure, you could do. Shmanesi, for sure, you could do before, uh, right after Amuda Shachar. So that's already the time for it. Okay, next is what like this. If you are in a minion and uh, you're supposed to say Tachmon, they don't say Tachmon, what do you do? Do you mean So technically you don't say Tachnun. Uh, some people will go off to the side. I mean, if it's inconspicuous, if it's conspicuous, you have a shy love of laces guy to do. Huh? Of doing what different mean? things. Huh? What does the word mean? What is what? The word you say. Inconspicuous? You don't make a show out of it. Okay, next is like this. Even if you're not davening with a minion, the proper place to daven is in a shul. Why? Because the place is holy. So even, let's say, you miss the minion or whatever, you can't daven with the minion, it's still better to daven in a shul because it's a mokum kodesh, it's a holy place, and therefore uh, you should do that. Now, the Bishop and Levi says in the Gemara, a person should always make an effort to be from the first ten to the minion. Why, he says, because I feel a may boy even if a hundred people come later, you guys, the first ten, get the reward of all of them. So it's a very good thing to be on time to show. Uh, and also it says, uh, a person who makes sure to go to morning and the evening to show in the proper time and davens properly and has a proper kedusha, he lives long. He merits Adichas Yom living long and they even quote a Pasik. Now, a person should have a mokim kavua. Now, mokim kavua means a set place in the shul where you daven. A person should have a set place in the shul where they daven. By the way, that doesn't mean you can have one place for shachris, one place for mincha, one place for maidah, one place weekday, one place for Shabbos. But whatever that particular tefillah is, it says you're supposed to have a set place in the shul to daven. In fact, it's not in the mall, not in fact, but within Dalit Amis, within six feet, is called the proper place. So now let's say your place is here. And you come to show somebody sitting on your seat. So instead of making a tumble, you sit next to him. It's still within the six feet. And uh, it's just considered as if you're davened in your regular place. But the, one thing is for sure, by the way, if it's going to cause a fight, then for sure it's not worth it. Okay? Um, um, okay. Next thing is like this. It's a mitzvah to run 
Usually people do this the opposite way. You're supposed to run into shul and go slowly out of shul. A lot of people run out of shul and they will come slowly to shul. But you're supposed to, bechlal, anytime you have a mitzvah to do, you're supposed to run to do the mitzvah. Like you said, derech mitzvah, secha orutz. And even Shabbos, interesting, even though Shabbos you're not allowed to run, forbidden to run on Shabbos, but if you're running to shul or to a mitzvah, so then you're allowed to run to shul. Or running out of shul, you're not allowed to. But to go into the shul, to run to shul, that you're allowed to. Um, okay, I'm just looking what's practical over here. Especially if you run the shul. Yeah, it's good. Um, These are not practical dinim. Oh, a very important din. You have to force the people of a city to build a shul. Bezdin years ago would force people. In fact, there's a very interesting din. If you want to knock down a shul to build up a bigger one, the din is an aloha. You're not allowed to knock down the first shul until the second shul has a place already to daven. God forbid you're going to knock down the building and then whatever's going to happen, you're not going to be able to build the shul and then you're going to have a problem. So then Shkhnarach is, you're not allowed to knock down the shul until you have another shul to daven. Until the community builds another shul. Um, okay. Oh, Let me see what else is there. <clears throat> Okay, next. Does that apply even if uh, you're in a big city where there are a lot of shuls? Well, if there are other shuls in the community that walk, you know, in the neighborhood, then it doesn't matter. But you told me in the shtetls of yesteryear, there were no, there was like one shul. And, uh... <laughs> okay, next. Next then is the Kedusha of the Beis HaKnesses and Beis HaMedrash. The Gedusha, the Shul, Yeshiva, all those types of uh, things. It says like this, it's a very, the Gedusha of Beis HaKnesses and Beis HaMedrish is extremely important. It's a very great mitzvah. And because it's God's home. It's a miniature Beis HaMikdash. So therefore you have to have proper respect and awe in the Shul because of Hashem who finds himself in the Shul. Like it says in Mikdashi Tiro, you should be fearful of my migdosh, meaning awe and respect. And therefore, the same thing applies, like it says, Elam the Migdash Ma'at, or Zabati Knesir, Zabati Madrashis. These are all the shuls, are Mamish Miniature Base Migdash, where Shempra is present. And therefore, like this, <clears throat> you're not allowed to speak Dvarim Betelim and Shul. You're not supposed to speak idle gossip and Shul. You're not allowed to do only uh, any calculations of business, uh, only, only show, uh, only mitzvah. Um, you have to make sure the shul is clean. You have to make sure there is a uh, light in the shul. That's why you say, Misha Eskim Betzarchi Tzibar Vamuna, there's a Nesim Nela Moed, and you can pork on. The Yayin Lekid Shul Avdala, you know, you, uh, you say, and you can pork on that they get a lot of bracha. In fact, in Halach it says, you're not allowed to kiss little children in a shul. Big people you probably don't want to kiss, but anyway. But little kids, you're not allowed to kiss in a shul because in a shul we're only showing love to Hashem, not to anybody else. Obviously, you kiss the safe potato, it's all part of uh, the love of Hashem. What about adult? Huh? What about adult? Adult? <laughs> You can kiss because you don't mean it anyway. You're not showing any love to them. <laughs> it's really true. In Shekhanach it says, Banavaktanim, little kids. On the contrary, if it's adults, then you're showing, obviously, if it's a real kiss, not, um, you know, I'm talking about a real, a real kiss. So then in the shul, by showing an adult real love, then you're showing Aves Yisrael, which is, helps in the resting of Hashem. But little kids, it's not a concept of Aves Yisrael, it's because, you know, they're cute, you love them, or whatever it is, so then you're not supposed to kiss them in a show. Okay. Um, now, before a person goes into show, they have to make sure to wipe off 
all the dirt from their feet, not to bring dirt into a shul. And if there's any, uh, you should make sure you shouldn't have any dirt on your garment. Again, you come with dirty garments to shul. It's disrespectful to the shul. You have to have respect to our shul. And also, this is applies to especially those people that spit at a lenu. If you spit in a shul, you're not allowed to spit in the shul unless if you cover it with your foot right away. So therefore, those people that have a meaning of spitting by a lenu, you're allowed to spit by a lenu, but you have to cover it with your foot uh, right away. Which, by the way, if you have carpet in the shul, the interesting halach, not in this, in the Shabbos, by the way. If you have a, a carpet in the shul and you spit by a lenu, you can't rub, you know, sometimes you rub it with your foot. You can't do that. Number one, you're cleaning the carpet. Even on Shabbos? Even, uh, only on Shabbos. Only on Shabbos. Like this, you could. But I'm saying Shabbos, then if number one, you're cleaning the carpet, carpet it's, it's a problem. So on Shabbos, you just cover it with your foot and you don't do anything else. Another interesting thing is, you're not allowed to go into a shul for any reason but to daven or say till it. Meaning like this. What happens, you need to make a shortcut. Somebody has to go from there to here and you just cut through the shul. So you're not allowed to do that because then you're using the shul as a shortcut. If it's hot outside and you want to walk into a shul to cool off, or it's cold outside, you want to walk into a shul to warm up, you're also not allowed to do it. Because again, you're using the shul as an air conditioning or as a heating. But, and this is what the meaning is to do, it says in Aloha, if you come into shul, let's say because you're hot and you want to walk into an air conditioned shul, you sit down, you say a pasik or two, most people have the meaning of saying, Ashley, Yishvi, Visecha, Iyalocha, Salah. Then they say a pasik, so then, then it doesn't matter. But you can't use the shul as a shortcut, you can't use it to uh, okay. rain. Huh? If you come in because you want to leave something before Shabbos, because you cannot tell your Shabbos. So again, halachically, what it says in people don't do it, but it says in halacha what you should do is sit down for a second and say a pasik or two, and then go, what? <laughs> so again, it's not called, you didn't use it for a shortcut, you're using it to learn something. But the minute is, in Shukhan, if you take Shukhanar as is, you really should say a Pasuk or two. In, in, in fact, in, Sh- in Shukhanar, it even says you should sit down, first, you know, half and whatever it is, and say a Pasuk, and then, because then at least you uh, did the, um, you used it for something saintly. Acknowledging the Kedusha. Okay, next thing over here is like this. It says in Allah, when you build a shul, you need to have a Talmud Chacham there because there's a lot of intricate dinim in the construction of a shul. Okay, now, for instance, when you have an Arun Kedish, an Arun Kedish halachically uh, acquires its place. That means you have, let's say, an Aaron Kedish in the shul here. And I decide, you know what, I want to move it there. You're not allowed to. Unless it says if you make the shul bigger and then you're centralizing it in the middle of the shul, then it will be allowed to. But stamped, unless, unless, and this is what people should do when they build the shul, whenever they put something in place, they should have in mind, I'm doing this on the condition that I can move it. Because if you make a condition when you put it down that you can move it, then you would be allowed to move it. Or, for instance, there has to be the bima, the shulchan, where you read the Torah. Doesn't, it says in the Allah, it has to be in the middle of the shul. It doesn't mean the middle of the shul. But it can't be all the way up, mamish by the Arden Kedish, like they have in the conservative and reform. That is a mamish atrei for shul. Mamish atrei for shul, you're not allowed to daven in there. So you have to have a space... Either, it depends also how the room is set up. I mean, if you have like in 70 upstairs, everybody knows, they have the shulchan and then the Arun Kedish, but there's no chairs there, but every, everybody's standing all over the place. So that's not called, and based on the layout of the room, it's not called that the shulchan is in front of the room. But uh, there's a letter from the Rebbe, a famous letter from the Rebbe, the Rebbe writes that if you, if the beam is pretty close to the Arun Kodesh, you should put at least one, a few chairs, one row of chairs, and then it's already good, then it's not considered uh, putting it in. There's a lot of other dinam involved, by the way, 
Um, the what question. What? There's a lot of minhagim in halacha. We'll get to it in Mitzvah Shem tomorrow night and, and the rest of the time. Uh, where should the chazan stand? Right of the Arden Kedish, left of the Arden Kedish. Um, are you allowed to make a church into a shul? Are you allowed to make a shul into a church? These are all very, by the way, complicated dinim uh, with different ways of doing it, but it's not so simple. Um, the question is, can you make a mikvah into a shul? I mean, there's a lot of a lot of dinim in all that we'll see in Mitzvah tomorrow.